خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة So it is to show the Qur'an of Allah that He has created from yourselves, your spouses. Yeah, the Qur'an elucidates the purpose of it. It is kunu ilayha. So you get peace, sukun, and itminan. And Allah is the one that displays mawaddat, love, and rahmah and mercy. The show is not a thing that you can create yourself. Although everything outwardly would be a catalyst for that. But the truth is, it is a lot of places. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَتَوْ وَرَحْمَةً And it is a beautiful vehicle to reach Allah, marriage. But in the case where your spouse does not play game, you should not bend your total happiness upon him. It will be fantastic to walk this journey together. But if he's not prepared to walk with the path, don't make him your ma'bud. One of the errors that we make, you should be loyal to him, you should love him, but walladina amanu ashaddu hubba lillah. Those that have brought iman, their love should be much more, much more stronger for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would we know that our love for Allah is more, or our spouses is more, is when the dictates of Allah's command is one, and what the spouse requires from us is the opposite. As to who we give preference to will show as to where our affiliation is. If a wife makes a request of to going to a place and compromising our values of deen, and Allah's command and the command of taqwa is that you should not be in a place where Allah disapproves of, then you give preference to the command of Allah over the wife's requirements and demands. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ So my point is that certain times it just doesn't work out for you. What you imagine, you look for the outward qualities and characteristics that you would like. And it just doesn't work out. Yesterday I had a very disturbing phone call. And this is not incident unique to this one person. She got married to one of the other girls in the madrasa, their family, because they know. And they had a good relationship for a few years. He was also in dean, outward dean, etc. Then she seen the changing of his clothing. And then the people he affiliated with. And now he has developed an illness towards other women, but not even women in terms of permanent relationship. In, in women that are just for the purpose of what? For enjoyment. Obviously, there is great fear regarding your own health to continue in such a relationship because of the prevalence of AIDS today. And the person, one is total haram to sleep with a, a woman other than your wife. But then to sleep with women, they sleep with so many other men and they do it for a profession. So obviously it's a very disturbing phone call, but it's not unique to her. So to keep your sanity is where, in those conditions, because you pended your happiness on an individual and it turned out after some time, not even immediate. So it's so important that we Spend our happiness, pleasures with Allah in the hukam of Allah. Allah bi dhikrillah tatmainul kulub. In the hukam of Allah, there is itminan al Allah has made no such individual that can fulfill all your needs and requirements, your monetary needs. And she was mentioning that financially she's very, very well off. And she says this finance, this finance has become the problem. So how? Because she's got so much money. So much money that he can get whoever he wants, whenever he wants, for whatever price she requires. So there's no shortfall in that. So the same dunya has become a wabal and has become a catalyst for evil, has become a springboard for fulfilling your carnal desires. 
So, yes, marriage is a beautiful institution. Practically, 99% of the Ambiya got married, with the exception of one, two, like Yahya alayhi salatu salam. Even Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu salam will get married later. So that is, um, that is the sunnah of all the Ambiya. But be careful that pending your self-worth, your affiliation with Allah on a marriage. Because then if it doesn't work out, then unfortunately you become distant from Allah. And then you become despondent. And then you start uttering things like, I don't deserve this. I was an ideal student. My asatida gave me lots of du'as. I engage in my naf- nafal ibadat over, besides obviously the compulsory ibadat. I was as far as possible obedient. This is your test. There's a different question whether a person should remain in such a marriage. There is health dangers in that regard. And I told you it's not unique to one person. Unfortunately, there are a number of alimas that have told me the same thing. So it doesn't mean we shouldn't get, we shouldn't have the negativity that I must not get married. Because those that it has happened to are a very small minority and percentage. So we should keep the broader perspective in mind. From that, what we learn, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those who bring iman, their love for Allah is much more intense, much more strong. Then, they are, that is the one extreme. Then we are finding, Alima's phoning, that the husbands are in, involved in other activities besides this activity, which they totally disapprove of. And outwardly, outwardly we chose deen. So therefore we feel more disillusioned because we use deen as a criteria to choose and it turned out to be everything other than what we thought. Obviously one is we are mukallaf, we are subjugated to what is the outward. We don't know the inside of anybody. Sharia has given us a criteria. Tunkaul maratu li arbain, li maliha, wali hasabiha, wali jamaliha, wali diniha, fatfar bidati din. In the same way when choosing a male spouse, din should be the priority. So one is obviously in today, we live such hypocritical lives that one is a facade and outward of deen. Then it's said that so many of them are beaten by their husbands whom they thought would be a, a means of their solace and means of their peace and inner ones. So we all need to learn a lesson that this path, our first and foremost allegiance is towards Allah. Under no circumstances should anybody allow us and allow anybody such control of us that we get derailed from our objective. That is very, very important. In love also, besides Allah, Allah's love is such a love that has no shores. Every other love, you can be intense in love but it has its shores and parameters and diameters. That means as long as it does not contravene, exceed the bounds that Allah has set, the bounds that Allah has set, that will be a continuous thing. So eventually, if He turns around completely different, that should never ever derail you from your objective. Because this world, irrespective, Allah Ta'ala give you Spouses that appreciate you and keep you with kindness and love. But your spouse under no circumstances is your ma'bud. Your allegiance and final allegiance is only to the one deity. And there's Allah Zad. Your maker, your creator, your cherisher, your nourisher. That being to whom you are going to return. Otherwise, yes, it's against what you wanted. It's not what you got married for. But that is your test. That is your test to be loyal to your maker, cherisher. So therefore it is very, very important from now. We develop an intense relation with Allah. And our first allegiance is to Allah. And nobody else, don't ever allow in any other human being 
to have such power over you that can derail you from your journey towards Allah. And this has to be developed here. Because you can choose the most ideal partner who you think will make you happy. What the outward characteristics. Therefore, kunum as Look at the beauty of that kunum as and therefore, the best amongst you are the ones that are good to your wives, but that's where your test is. That woman that has left her house and have let her support, so to say, her parents and the structure that she was comfortable with. And now she is at your mercy, whether you are broad-shouldered enough, men enough to take care of her or not. That is your real test. Test outside the masjid as imam, everybody respects you because of your, of your title and that accolade that you have uh, achieved of being Mawlana, etc. But that's not the true you. The true you is to overlook, to forgive. Silman Katak, that is that is the epitome of Akhlaqiyat. Silman Katak, Wafu Amman Dolamak, Watoti Amman Haramak. Whether the wife has earth that you can overlook. You do not take advantage. If a person does not fulfill your rights, irrespective, irrespective to fulfill their rights, because your allegiance lies towards Allah. If your allegiance lies to yourself, if a person does not fulfill your rights, you will not fulfill the rights. And you will unfortunately justify the two two wrongs. Two wrongs never ever made a right. Never ever made the right. Never would you be questioned on the day of Qiyamah who did not fulfill your rights, whose rights you did not fulfill. But the point I'm getting at is your, your allegiance first and foremost lies with Allah's Zat. And we need to get attachment to that. This partner that we will get will be a beautiful, beautiful walk with if they sh you share the same ideas with. There will be some of you and that is your test that you will not find such a partner. But that gives you no reason to become disillusioned with following Shariat. To give you disillusion with the Ahkamat of Allah. Because by the end, this worldly life, no matter how long it seems, how treacherous it seems, it is only two days compared to the first day of Akhirat. So, Ahabib Habib Kahonama, love to an extent. Perhaps, Wabgud Baghi Dakayomama, he will become your enemy one day. Then, also in hatred, there is bounds, dislike to an extent. Perhaps that person can become somebody you, you love, or you, there is a relation that has to be forced, whether it is due to your children that. Your son got married to that person's daughter. So be careful in what you say because you don't know what the future holds. Allah give you righteous, pious, uh, appreciative husbands, understand, that will walk the path with you. But these incidents are coming more. At times you feel really for the person. Really, really for the person. But people are asking, Mashura, should I remain in this marriage or not? Obviously there is a health factor. And the person... Did he go for spiritual transformation or not? Or is this inclined towards that? And he doesn't want to transform and change. Then for your health reason, for a time, you have to separate. Because unfortunately, he, he holds no scruples as to who he sleeps with, when he sleeps with. And Allah save us from such individuals. And our true test as men is that Akmal mu'minina imanan ahsanuhum khulukan wa khiyarukum khiyarukum li Nisa'im. And the Quran and Kareem takes qasam on the being of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam character وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And it is mentioned in Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani in the Tafsir وَآشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Take care of them in a kind, compassionate, loving way. There Allah Ma'arusi Baghdadi Rahmatullah is brought to admiration. Where it states that woman's nature, Yaglibna Kariman, they overpower a man that is hard, soft, kind, compassionate, loving. And the other usul is written there, Wayaglibuhunna laimun. 
uh, men that are bereft of kindness, compassion, love, their general way is to rule with an iron fist in their homes. Then it is mentioned, attributed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is some kalam in this riwayat. Therefore, I'm careful in what I'm saying. Attributed to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in respect to the principle, he is correct. Even though the Nabi could not have mentioned it, Allah Ma'alusi has brought it in Tafsir al Mani, that the nature of woman, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, so he gave, mentioned the principle that noble men, generally the women control them in the sense that they overpower them. Because they got their journey towards Akhirat, they can't fight about every small issue and can't fight to prove themselves correct. And whereas wretched women, men will make sure that they are the controlling force in the house. So, but then it is that he said that Wana Ohibbu an Akuna Kariman Magluban. But I would prefer being noble, that there is no blotch on my character, even though I be overpowered. Wala Ohibbu an Akuna La Iman Ghaliban. I do not prefer being bereft of qualities, but dominating in the house. In fact, it's an unwritten rule of the Sufiya. I'm not saying it's a written rule. There's no specific hawala or reference I can give. That in the Sufiya, generally the wives are in control. Why? Because they've got no real uh, need to prove themselves correct. I'm not saying you should allow deliberately to somebody take advantage over you. But you can't remain your whole life to push your agenda in the house all the time. Your allegiance first lies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see that under no circumstances should that be a relationship be hampered because of somebody else's attitude. So very important girls, that our attachment to Allah becomes intense and our allegiance lies to Allah first and foremost. If Allah gives you a good partner, inshallah Allah gives all of you without any reservation that will appreciate you and walk with you this path. But at the same time, if takdeer has it that you don't have don't ever get derailed from your ob objective. You've got one life to live, and there's no second chance. Somebody is that. Subhanallah, you're behind me. Subhanallah, you're behind me. Mashallah, you're behind me.